Here's a short update on this Oid Impala. The one I just put that power steering pump on, the sensor, the rear ABS harness. Now it's not back for any of this stuff. It's been about, I don't know, maybe a week and a half, maybe two weeks. The owner said power steering has been absolutely fantastic. No squealing, no nothing. But she was driving the other day and she got a warning on the dash saying engine hot, AC disabled, blah, 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 right? So she brought it over here and, you know, it's the uh, next day. So, I mean, it's cold today. It is, uh, it's about 39. See that? Hopefully you guys can see that. And when I first connected my scanner, now this is a cold start. The car's been sitting overnight. First of all, here goes our code, colon thermostat, temperature below thermostat regulating temperature. And if we look at some data here when i first turned the engine on and moved it into the garage so the engine wasn't even running for you know 45 seconds the temperature said about 64 degree which clearly we are not 64 de degree and a car running for less than a minute isn't gonna bump you up from 39 to 64 so where's our temperature at and right now, I turned it on when I connected the scanner. And look, now we're up to 77. This is all in less than one minute of runtime. Everything is completely stone cold on this car. And 77. So I'm just going to check some simple things. But right off the bat, I'm going to go ahead, shoot the parts cannon at it, and tell the owner to bring me a thermostat. Only because I guarantee you the thermostat on this car has been forever since it's been changed, if ever. And a temperature sensor. Because I think that's the biggest thing that's going on here is that temperature sensor is giving the wrong reading and it's causing the car to think it's overheating even though it's not. All right, so here goes the temperature sensor right there inside the block. Uh, let me try to get this to focus for you guys. Now it definitely looks old. It doesn't look like someone's been there recently messing with that. Uh, so yeah, guys, I'm just going to have to go ahead and call that. And I want to check a few other things. So down there... Connecting to that lower radiator hose is the housing for a thermostat. And I don't know if you guys can see that, but it kind of looks moist. Let me see. All right, hopefully you guys can see that. It kind of looks moist. So that gives me more than enough reason to go ahead in there and replace the thermostat and maybe even the little housing. And another thing I want to check is the coolant. Make sure it's not empty because she was saying she wasn't getting heat inside the car and the temperature gauge wasn't going up. It was like at zero. Okay, like if the car was just stone cold. Uh, so yeah, just more signs of a bad temperature sensor or, and also maybe even a bad uh, thermostat in conjunction with that. But you can see we are not low on coolant. This thing's completely topped off. So, you know, my biggest fear here was that it was low on coolant and that's why we weren't getting any heat in the cabin. And that's why the temperature sensor wasn't working correctly. But it's completely topped off. There is no leak here. I'm going to tell the owner she could still drive it, even though that thing is telling her. Uh, you know, don't drive, turn off the AC, engine is overheating. The engine is not overheating. This thing is fine. And I know that because the second I turned this car on, cold, it said engine overheating. How? How is it overheating? Literally just turned it on. Everything's stone cold. No, it's a, it's a sensor issue, guys. So what I'm going to do is tell her she could continue to drive it in the meantime, only because I don't want to put AutoZone parts on this car. Just not a fan of them unless i absolutely have to in a pinch but this isn't one of those situations we could actually wait for parts to get delivered from rock auto and find either oem parts or ac delco parts which are pretty much the same thing so that's what i'm going to do i'm going to look for oem parts for the temperature sensor the thermostat the thermostat housing and then we'll uh we'll go from there guys I just talked to the owner and she agrees with me that we could just go ahead and order the parts online. Until then, she's just going to continue to drive the car. Normally, I would say don't drive it until we fix it, even though there's really no issue here. But she needs a car, guys. You know, I mean, what are you going to do? It's like winter time and people need their cars. So instead of it sitting here for a week, which really there's no reason to, she could continue to drive it. And just I told her to ignore that warning sign for now. Uh, we are back in this Impala and the owner's just been driving it and I texted her like two weeks ago saying, hey, you know, when are you going to bring your car over? She finally got back to me saying, oh, well, the car's been driving so good. I figured we could just wait on him. Like, what are you talking about? She said all the problems it had, all of that has gone away. All of the overheating, warning, shut engine off, all that stuff is gone. 
she said her heat started working again so i have no idea what's going on here clearly the, the car was not overheating and i know that already but for the problem to just randomly go away i don't know <laughs> we are back with this impala it's probably over a month easy uh, for this car if you're wondering why it took so long for the owner to bring it back well it's because she said the problem went away and everything started working for a while until it popped back up again so of course once the problem comes back oh now it's time to fix it right so i pulled it into the garage and first thing i noticed is we have power steering whining noise and keep in mind this is that same impala that i went through hell with the power steering issue i put a new pump on it and if you remember the o-ring on that uh hard line underneath the pump was damaged so we had to replace the o-ring well the pump is making noise and if we look inside of it it's hard to tell but that fluid is low so obviously we have a leak somewhere now i don't think it's that lower line the one i put the uh new o-ring on because everything around here looks nice and dry it doesn't look like anything from the pump is leaking or anything around it because whenever something is dripping off of the pump it does not take long for that fluid to make its way onto the pulley and it starts getting flung everywhere and all this stuff is dry you can see everything looks really good around here it doesn't look like a mess how it did before so that tells me wherever this fluid is not going has nothing to do with the job that i did i guarantee you this rack and pinion is leaking or something else is leaking but i don't think it's the uh new power steering pump and the new o-ring that i put on so i'm gonna go ahead and top that off with new fluid and that'll be for another day. Right now, let's focus on what it's here for. Let's just go ahead and check our codes before we do anything. So there's that one. System rich. EVAP leak, who knows, there's probably an issue with the purge valve, even though I've already changed it like twice with the uh, OEM parts. Could be something else though, of course. Cooling thermostat. So it's a good thing we got a thermostat for it because that's usually what that is. So. Yeah, let's go ahead and shoot the parts cannon at it. What would make more sense to me, what's causing this heat to go and come and however the hell it wants, like a one night stand, is the thermostat. Let's just say that thermostat is being stuck open, okay? Well, that would cause almost like a no heat situation. The, the air that would be blowing out of it would feel warm at best. So yeah, it's causing a cold and it, you know a, a stuck thermostat can cause the symptoms that the owner is experiencing so here goes the parts that we have we got a temperature sensor this is going to be thermostat and i ordered a brand new thermostat housing the pigtail for the temperature sensor you find out that when you go in there to change a sensor the connector itself is also no good so it's why i have experience with this car and how things are with this engine uh, so it's why I picked this up. It's just in case. I'm not saying we're going to need it. It's like the more I look at this car, you know, all the memories are starting to flood back to me. <laughs> so, you know, we were talking about a slight coolant loss. It could be losing coolant. And guys, here goes the thermostat housing right there. And you can see how it's wet around it. So that might be our slight coolant leak. As you can see, it wasn't a lot because the coolant's probably sitting like right here when it should be all the way up top. So that looked like a very small like seepage and that would kind of add up to the amount that we're losing here. Sometimes it's just really easy to chase your tail when it's been a while since you looked at a car and then it comes back and you have to kind of reevaluate things and see what's going on. As you can see, I got the thermostat and the housing off of the engine. And guys, this was the source of our leak uh, because you see this mess we got here that is coolant. Normally when a thermostat has been on the car for a long time and obviously this one has, even if you remove both of the fasteners, sometimes the thermostat is stuck on there and you got to give it a few love taps just to break that bond. That wasn't the case for this one. As soon as both of these fasteners came out, this thing just fell right off all by itself. That tells me there was never a bond right here and the ceiling surface has been compromised and that's why it was leaking coolant and that's what this is. So that's one issue right there, right? The second issue is if we look inside of there, you can see this piece of rubber has been damaged and it's compromised look at all that mess okay if we turn it around look on the inside we can see pretty much the same thing that piece of rubber has fallen apart so what's going on here guys is that rubber 
the sensor grates over time falls apart and when the thermostat opens up that piece of rubber gets wedged inside of there so when the thermostat is trying to close it won't fully close because that rubber is wedged between the ceiling surface and the thermostat so that causes a thermostat to be stuck open and it that would be the exact symptoms that this lady is experiencing in her vehicle basically when the thermostat is stuck open the coolant is constantly circulating okay so it has no time to get up to temperature or get up to the heat that it needs to so it's constantly circulating and it would cause warm air at best to be blowing into the cabin and it would be the exact opposite if you had a thermostat that was stuck closed basically when, once it's stuck closed that coolant can no longer circulate it's just being held inside of the engine and it starts to overheat and that causes your overheating condition but that's not what this lady was experiencing she was experiencing no heat which led to a false overheating uh, so bad thermostat killing two birds with one stone here now over to the temperature sensor you're probably saying well the thermostat is clearly the issue there's no reason to replace this temperature sensor and i can agree with you 100 percent this is the problem with this vehicle not this temperature sensor so i just want to pause the video right here because at this point i'm about to basically say that the original temperature sensor is fine there's no reason to change it and me installing the new part is a waste of time whereas that's 100 percent incorrect what's going on here is since it's been over a month and a half since i looked at this car i completely forgot the things that we already established the first time we looked at the car which is basically how the car was claiming that it was overheating on a cold start even though it wasn't at that point it's no longer a thermostat issue it's a temperature sensor issue so I did make the right call on which parts are going to go on this car which is the thermostat and the temperature sensor but what I'm saying at this point in the video about the temperature sensor going on is a waste of time that's incorrect I'm just forgetting what we already established a month and a half ago. So I hope you guys understand all of that. This would honestly be a waste of my time. But I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place here, guys. This part didn't come from Auto Parts Store. If it came from AutoZone, I would simply just go return it and that's it. But no, we got it from Rock Auto. So trying to return this thing would cost more money for us to send it back than the value of this actual part. So you start to, okay, you know what, we got the part, it's an AC Delco part, let's just go ahead and put it on the car, it could benefit from, from a new part, right? And sure it can. The problem is, it's proving to be very difficult to get that sensor out of there. As you can see, I disconnected the harness, not a big issue, came off pretty easy. But I've tried so many combination of different things and I can't find an easy way to get that sensor out of there. Not without removing like the exhaust manifold or maybe even this bracket for the mount. And guys, I don't think it's worth the hassle, you know, because clearly there's nothing wrong with this sensor. Is it worth going through all that trouble to change a part that isn't faulty? We already know that it's a thermostat. That little voice inside of me is telling me just change the part. You got a brand new part here and I would love to change this part. I'm going to keep attempting to see if I can figure something out to try to get that out of there. Uh, without taking apart all this crap but if push comes to shove and i just can't get it i'm gonna have to throw in the towel guys so it looks like i am gonna be able to get this done and i know some of you are yelling at the screen who have already done this before so my best thought was to remove this bracket so of course i removed the mount the one that looks like this one it sits right here i just removed it put it off to the side right there on the ground and then this bracket okay so the two top ones you got to get those out first but in order to get those out you got to be able to manipulate the coolant uh, lines right here so it's as simple as removing part of the air box so you can get access to the two 10 mil nuts and once you get those off it lets you slide this whole bracket off and now you can move this around however you see fitting in order to get to these two top bolts and they're pretty short bolts as you can see they're not that long so you get you get both of those out no issues at all and then the last one is kind of tucked in there pretty deep so you're just gonna have to use a wrench uh thankfully they're not on there that tight so you just got to break it free once it breaks free you can pretty much just take it out with your fingers put your fingers inside of there get it out and then the whole bracket just comes right out and with the bracket out of the way it's as simple as that guys now we could get our wrench and just go ahead and take it out like this to me that is the easiest way possible to change the sensor rather than trying to remove the whole exhaust manifold and all that so now we could just grab our 19 mil wrench go ahead crack it free and there it goes guys coming off 
there we have it the new sensor is installed it's plugged in everything's good to go as far as the harness i'm not going to go ahead and splice in that new pigtail that we have because there's nothing wrong with this one there's no green crusties the wire isn't the, the insulation isn't torn open or anything it's just it's fine there's no reason to replace it i bought it just in case just like when we replaced the uh, camshaft sensor on this one once we got underneath that power steering pump we saw that the harness or the connector for that sensor was destroyed so i went ahead and picked up the pigtail for this one just in case we ran into the same issue but this pigtail is absolutely fine there's no reason to replace that harness so i got all of this put back together everything is plugged back in just how it should be and i came on this side i removed the mount that was right here in front just to give me a little bit more space so i could get my hands inside of there this might be a little tricky but I have to do some cleaning if you come down here you can see it looks pretty good the surface isn't too bad but i still want to do whatever cleaning i can and here goes our new parts over here so we got our new housing as well as our brand new thermostat so that's gonna go right in there fits perfectly just like that so i cleaned everything as much as i could the mating surface and it looked really good to me so i went ahead and assembled everything you can see we got our new housing in place the hose is on it, clamp is in place, everything's looking really good. So uh, now it's time to put this engine mount back in place and let's fill up the system with coolant because the owner's already calling me asking when it's gonna be done. So let's go ahead and wrap this job up. So I've had the car running for some time. I'm in the process of bleeding the cooling system. You can see I got my no scrub fun over there. And we are currently at 196 degree it got up to like 214 as you can see and then of course the thermostat opens up at the moment we have nice hot air blowing out the vents uh, but I'm not convinced that it's uh, finished bleeding so I'm just gonna sit here a little bit longer and make sure that the cooling system is 100% bled before I give it back to the owner so the temperature inside the cabin is enough to like burn your hands you can see here on the scanner it's pretty consistent around 200 it's just hovering around that area so everything looks really good uh, what i'm going to do now is uh pull off my funnel we'll make sure the cooling system is completely topped off and uh let's grab our flashlight and a mirror and let's start checking for leaks around that temperature sensor as well as the thermostat housing as far as the temperature sensor Looks really good. I don't see anything wet around it. Nothing dripping or seeping. Looks really good to me. As far as the thermostat housing, let me see if I can get you guys inside of here to see this. So far, so good. I'm trying to not drop my phone because if I do, there is a pan full of coolant below me. And that would be a bad day. So as you can see, everything looks pretty good from what I could see. I'm happy with it. It doesn't look like it's leaking at all. So that's going to be it for this Impala. There was absolutely no leaks at all. I gave it back to the owner. And then about a week, maybe a week and a half later, I got in contact with her. And she said, there's no more warning as far as overheating. None of that stuff has happened again. She said it's been running flawlessly. And the amount of heat that's being pushed out of the vent, she said it's amazing that the, the car has never blown heat like that before. She said it'll burn her hands if she puts it right in front. So she's really happy with the amount of heat that she's getting out of her car now, especially in winter. So uh, that's good. It turned out to be a really good repair. You're probably wondering what are you looking at right here. Well, this is a engine mount off of another Impala, a different one. So that's going to be the next video that comes out. So I hope you guys come back to see that video. It's a, it's a real treat.